Hello and welcome to today's webcast, Tips and Best Practice for Streamlining Resolutions Time with Datalink One Call, brought to you by Datalink. I'm Chandani McDermott. I'm part of the marketing team at here at Datalink and will be your moderator today. Before we begin, I do have a few housekeeping items. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize, move any of the windows you have open. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any questions during the webcast, please click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your questions. All questions from the webcast will be captured. If you are experiencing any difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark icon below the presentation window. The help guide covers common technical issues. I would now like to turn the presentation over to our presenter, Datalink Client Service Manager, Jane Howell. Jane, the floor is yours. Thank you, Shandani. Good afternoon. Um, again, my name is Jane Howell. I'm a Client Services Manager with Datalink. And today I would like to present to you um, an overview of our customer support organization, its capabilities, what we offer, our service levels, um, how we manage customer satisfaction, and we also want to go over uh, an overview of how to engage with our team, how to be successful in opening a case, how to engage with our support team, how to escalate cases, um, and things like that. Um, I can take questions at the end, or you can email in your questions, and I will answer them at the end as well. So our customer support capabilities, we have two uh, resolution centers, one in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and one in Cary, North Carolina. They are mirroring support centers uh, for tiers of support. We do also have a dedicated call management system. Uh, we use ServiceNow for our ticketing system, and each location has a dedicated lab facility so the engineers can recreate uh, various scenarios as they need to. Uh, you'll see in a future slide um, what we do for customer satisfaction and how we measure the customer satisfaction, uh, but we do take um, some rigorous efforts to uh, maintain a, a, a high level of standard for customer satisfaction. We also engage our field engineer resources as an extension of the support organization. Sometimes there are opportunities where uh, we need to uh, speak to the field team uh, to get a better understanding of uh, our customers' environments, and we do utilize those engineers uh, as an extension of that team. In terms of our manufacturer partnerships, we do have a, a specialized incident management process whereby we manage um, our customers' support cases, but when we do need to escalate cases, uh, we escalate direct to our partners' back lines. Um, we always uh, maintain high level of training courses within uh, those partnerships, and also uh, we have regular performance reviews with our vendor partners, so we meet monthly, sometimes twice a month with our partners, and um, always make sure that we have the most up-to-date information with respect to uh, escalation channels. Um, we review cases at times and just always maintain uh, excellent communication with our, with our vendor partners. You'll see on the screen here a snapshot of the vendor partners who we work with and who we uh, take the first call support for, NetApp being our top partner, uh, along with Veritas. And a most recent, a uh, couple of recent additions to our portfolio uh, would be Code 42 with Crash Plan, um, as well as Pure Storage. Uh, we also have a great relationship with TSANet, which is a cooperative support community. Um, and we also uh, have recently added Cisco uh, with our Master Cloud Builder specialization as well. So we're constantly growing this portfolio, looking um, and talking to new partners. Um, so this list is always growing. So our one call overview, how to um, engage with our team. Um, our customers span all industries. You'll see here um, all, some of the logos of our top uh, customers and asterisks next to, um, next to these 
logos would be those customers that are utilizing our unified support services. Any coverage that uh, you have with DataLink would mirror the vendor maintenance terms. So if you have a 7 by 24 by 4 hour hardware response um, maintenance term, that is the, the, the coverage and the SLA that you would receive from DataLink. You also have access to our incident management portal. I will show you how to get access to that portal uh, in a future slide. Um, you also still maintain that access for uh, the management, the manufacturer portal for upgrades and firmware and, and anything that you need to be kept up to date with uh, respect to uh, the manufacturer as well. In terms of the unified support for the VDC infrastructure, we always want to be that single point of contact for the total solution. So we also offer the additional uh, triage for the VDC infrastructure, things like FlexPod, VSpec, SpeedLock, et cetera. Some additional services that we offer, uh, and part of my role as well, is to execute customer care service reviews where we uh, go over incidents that have been opened over a given period of time, maintain that communication with, uh, with your team, the support organization, answer questions uh, that, that may come up, um, as well as continue to make sure that you um, know how to reach us and know our uh, most up-to-date escalation process and contacts. We also, uh, during those reviews, Always ask if there are new folks who have joined the team to uh, make sure that those new team members have access to our, um, our contact information and our escalation contacts. We also have a complex incident management support uh, process whereby a member of our team, our technical account manager, uh, will overview the more difficult cases and, and bring in additional vendors if need be um, to help res resolve the issues. So our service level goals, we have a lot of goals on our team and we, we track these goals uh, very carefully each month. Um, the top goal is around resolution. 90% of the calls that come into DataLink should be resolved by us. Uh, where we, we actually you know, fix the problem. We're not just escalating to our vendor partners when the calls come in. We you know, maintain a very, very high level of, of call resolution. And you'll see a little bit more um, in a future slide how that works. But 70% of the cases uh, should be resolved by our frontline team. So um, the engineers who are answering the phone are actually those who are resolving almost 70% of the cases. And 75% of the calls coming in should be answered by a certified engineer in less than 60 seconds. We call this our 7560 SLA, a very important SLA so that you're not sitting on hold um, and you're you know, routed directly to an engineer who can help you. 75% of the P1 incidents are responded to in less than 15 minutes. I'll tell you, the, res the response rate on, on um, most of our cases is really about five minutes. And our resolution on those P1 incidents are, is uh, sitting at about 75%, uh, should be resolved in under four hours. So our res response matrix, how we should be responding to you um, and what our SLAs are, is on the screen now. So we have priority level definitions in the center of the screen there, uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, and those uh, definitions are what our engineers uh, work towards when they're working with you to determine what that uh, priority should be when you open a case. And I'll tell you that this is very, very important with respect to the success of your case and how, um, how the case is managed. So you'll see the initial response in the grid, as well as the active case updates uh, and observing case updates there on the priority. And again, it's based on priority. So it's real important that out of the gate when you open a case with data link that you set the priority and work with the engineer to jointly determine that, that severity or priority so that you know, you're getting the best response, you're getting the updates when uh, you should or when you expect and so forth. So um, you'll see those SLAs there in that grid. 
<clears throat> and I'll also say on this slide, um, we like to tell customers if uh, if you know, let us know how you'd like to be communicated with um, when you do open a case. So we have uh, customer contact information in the system, which may include a mobile phone and your desk phone. If it doesn't, if we don't have your desk phone as a contact or your mobile phone as a contact, let us know how you'd like to be communicated with when you open a case so that the engineer knows and has, you know, has that expectation of, you know, if you're not going to be at your desk and you're going to be in the data center, for example, and you need to have, you know, have us call you on your mobile phone, let the engineer know that or uh, let them know, you know, when you, if, if something changes and you're not going to be at a particular um, phone number. And also if you expect to be called versus communicated with via email, we also like to know that as well. Um, you know, any t any sort of communication that you can have with the engineer around what your expectations are uh, with respect to communication uh, would be great, and that will also help to um, to resolve the case more successfully and, and move things along quickly. So our customer satisfaction surveys are very, very important uh, to us and to our customers in terms of um, what we do to help improve and um, you know, be successful within our team. So we use a, a third party uh, company called Service 800, and it is a service which um, will allow us to uh, deliver a 10 question survey. Um, customers are, are not surveyed more than once in 30 days, and you can certainly opt out of that survey if you need to, uh, but we do get a very high uh, rate of client participation because it is quick, but it's our way of ensuring that our customers, um, you know, let us know how we're doing, and it's your opportunity to let us know if something didn't go as well as you expected. Uh, we do follow up on any issues that might arise. We call these hot sheets, and that is part of my job is to follow up with our customers and, and you know, iron anything out that needs to be ironed out or, or you know, just help to improve uh, a case if, if something was um, closed and it shouldn't have or, you know, things, if things, um, you know, need to be improved upon, we, we do take that, make that effort uh, during these surveys. These are tracked very, very closely. Um, and, you know, we don't, our engineers don't have a metric around closing cases each month. They don't have to maintain a certain number of case closure rates. Uh, their bonuses are even evaluated based on our customer satisfaction results. So we do take this very, very, um, very, very seriously. Some other resources that are available to you, um, like we're doing today, our Tech Tuesday events. Um, typically, they are technical presentations that are delivered by um, our senior engineers. Again, you know, third Tuesday of each month. They are usually around uh, new product releases or tips and tricks. We're always looking for new ideas on what to present uh, and what our customers are looking for. We thought we'd take the opportunity today to, um, you know, tell our customers how to be successful in opening our cases and how to how to work with DataLink, but uh, typically they are uh, a technical presentation. You can always add members of your team at the uh, link in the center of the screen there, Tech Tuesday and Contact, um, and the event notifications will come from events at datalink.com. So we always, you know, we don't want things to go into junk mail. So if you want, if you whitelist events at datalink.com, you'll always receive our notifications. And like this webcast, all webcasts uh, are recorded in our library, datalink.com slash resources hyphen library slash tech hyphen Tuesday. We also have lots of other resources uh, around the data center, flash, and cloud in our resource library. And if there are, um, if there are ideas for other Tech Tuesday events, uh, we're always looking, again, for, for new ideas on what to present and what our customers are looking for. So feel free to email me at jhowell at datalink.com with, with ideas that you may have. 
to our engagement process, how to um, open a ticket and work with our team. So our contact information is there at the top of the screen. We are, again, a 24 by 7 support resolution center. Our phone number, 1-800-291-3230. Um, we always ask that if you have a critical ticket to please call. Um, you will get an engineer very, very quickly. Again, you know, 75% of the time, within 60 seconds, you'll get to an engineer um, who, you know, can, can help you. But um, we do ask that, you know, for critical tickets, please uh, call for, for immediate uh, help. You'll see on the right side of the screen there your selections that you can make um, for a SEV1 case. You can uh, get into the SEV1 line. Uh, you also have the option to make uh, selections based on backup and archive, storage devices, CDC, or managed services. <coughs> Excuse me. We do have uh, email and portal as another option to open a case. Again, you know, set two, three, four, um, use, use email or portal. And that's our recommendation. Support at datalink.com is our email, and you'll see on the screen there the portal. Uh, portal web address. And to get access to our portal there in the second half of that of the screen, uh, just click the link and <clears throat> complete the template, company name, uh, first name, last name, email, business phone, our mandatory fields, and a mobile phone is optional. And we have the new user registration request form uh, picture there uh, on the right. Also, when you're uh, telling us the company name, if you could please um, use the full company name versus an acronym, uh, it's easier for us to uh, find your company name in our system. And then once you have access to the portal, you can track any incidents, open tickets, close, communicate with the engineer um, on any of the tickets, and really be proactive uh, and track the support cases through each phase of the process. So the next few slides sort of build off of each other. Uh, this is our support model. So this stick figure here is the user. And the reason uh, the reasons that user would open a ticket is uh, there on the left. So you know, it's a, a, a situation where there's something broken needs to be fixed, a configuration issue, maybe a question about whether something is covered, entitlement. Uh, or you need to escalate an existing case. And the information that is required uh, is there at the top, your company name, the contact information, the manufacturer model number, if applicable, a serial number, and a brief description of the issue along with the priority. And, you know, problem description is very, very important because we would then, you know, route that call to the, the correct person or engineer uh, who's able to help. You would open the case via phone, email, or the web portal there. So there is, um, the call comes in if you open the case via phone. The call comes in and you may get a six minute queue, a maximum of six minute queue. Um, you can, you do have the option to either leave a message with an engineer uh, and they will call you back at the phone number that you called us at or you can, um, you know, leave a message with the answering service. There is about a 2% of uh, overflow of the calls that come in to us uh, do get the queue. Uh, there is a P1 bypass though that you can select. Um, so that you don't have to leave a message or you don't have to wait on hold for the next available engineer. You can bypass into the P1 line and somebody will answer the, the, the phone. The call will come into the frontline team. There's three shifts of engineers, 24 by 7, and you'll see there in that diagram um, the areas of expertise that we, that we have. And again, the frontline team has about a 70% resolution rate, and that is, you know, one of the goals that I went over. 
We do have a formal escalation policy and timeline. So cases are escalated to the advanced support team either via recommendation from the frontline team or recommendation from our customers um, or through our timeline. And Shandani, if I can ask you to share the timeline on our quick reference card, page two. I can better explain the formal escalation policy. It's all set, Jane. I don't see it sharing. There you go. Perfect. OK, great. Is there a way that you can make that bigger? So increase it to about, yes, and then scroll across. So you'll see there, um, and everyone will have access to this quick reference card as a downloadable um, in this presentation. But um, for the purpose of this, so we have a formal escalation policy that's built into ServiceNow whereby based on the priority, again, there's the priority and, how, and the importance again, but based on the priority of the ticket, we have notifications that are built into ServiceNow to improve the communication between the engineer and our customers. And to use um, a ticket as an example, a critical ticket, if you open a critical ticket, um, the case is escalated to the advanced support engineer at two hours, and notifications go out to whoever opened the case, our customer, um, the support management team, salesperson, uh, you know, the account executive, their management, the field engineering team, um, along with their management, the executive management team, along with the president of DataLink. And again, you know, this is meant to help to improve the communication with our customers and throughout the life of the case, various activities or notification policies are being automatically pushed out of service now. So for example, at six hours, you're issued a, a customer update automatically. And again, same notification goes out uh, to the same individuals um, as in the uh, two hour mark. So again, this really just helps to um, ensure that we're consistently and, and continuously communicating with our customers. Okay, Shandana, you can toggle back. Thank you. So a case is um, then sitting with uh, the advanced support team. Again, 24 by 7, uh, three shifts of advanced support engineers as well. Uh, and they have um, you know, similar or the same, I should say, expertise around monitoring, security, et cetera. Uh, their resolution rate goal is about 90%. It, we're, month over month, however, uh, even though the goal is about 90%, month over month our resolution rate is, is north of 90%. We do track, again, uh, track that metric very, very closely. Um, so Tier 2 is the advanced support team, and Tier 3 is the, the uh, field team within Datalink or our vendor support. So if the advanced support team uh, needs to escalate to our vendor partner, that would be Tier 3. And again, they escalate direct to the back line. We also may engage the field team, uh, DataLink's field engineers, to help assist. But there's also uh, Tier 4 uh, with our on-call resources. There's always somebody on call within customer support, advanced support, support management. So you know, our customers are never without um, the ability to reach somebody. So in summary, there's three ways to reach us, phone, email, or web portal for tiers of support. We use a skill-based call routing system where based on your description, uh, the call or the case is get, it gets routed to the correct engineer. 
and we have our service levels that are defined. So in talking about escalation uh, for a minute, you do have three paths to escalate a case. Um, you can stay within the customer support organization, you can reach out to the regional sales organization, or you certainly can call uh, our corporate headquarters. We recommend that you reach out to our customer support duty managers and the support organization. Um, you will also uh, see on the quick reference guide when you download that, and Shandana, you certainly can um, toggle back to that quick reference card and I, I can talk about that the support contacts while Shindani is doing that. Um, so the escalation path, um, we recommend that you reach out to the customer support organization if you need to escalate a case. Um, so there in the center of the quick reference card, you'll see our phone number. You'll also see the escalation distribution, one call mgrs at datalink.com. That distribution encompasses all of our support managers that are listed in the center there. Mike Spralick, Anthony Delsinor, Chris Sang, Jim Bush, um, all the managers along with Jack Sparks, our director of customer support there in the bottom right. Um, they're all listed within that distribution. So if you need to escalate a case at any time, you can escalate uh, using the one call mgrs at datalink.com. Uh, distribution and your your uh, request will get answered very, very quickly. Um, also there down below you'll see the client services managers, my contact information, Jane Howell, along with uh, Zoe Reyes, uh, one of our other uh, client services managers on our team. Okay, Shindani. And again, this uh, this quick reference card is downloadable. So the automated workflows, um, I talked about that already with respect to how the, the notifications are pushed um, on on various incidents. And again, you know, yes, the, the incidents are escalated um, throughout the life of a case based on time frame and um, and priority. You'll also want to whitelist data link at service-now.com. This will allow any communication from the case um, to uh, stay out of your junk mail. So we talk about service onboarding, what, what this, what this uh, presentation is all about. We always make sure uh, that you have a copy of the quick reference guide. Um, we always like to make sure that our contact information for you is also up to date in our system. So if a product that you um, have with Datalink sends alerts, for example, or um, NetApp Auto supports, we always need to make sure that our contact information that we have in the system is up to date, and that is for business hours contacts along with primary and secondary after hours contacts if we need to ship uh, parts replacements uh, out to you. We need to make sure that the delivery contacts and the addresses are always up to date. So if at any time that changes, if um, if you could notify us, that helps to make the uh, the cases run more smoothly as well. Also, it's helpful to make sure that you have a web portal login. Um, so that you can help be proactive and, and maintain the communication and also uh, be able to look at the cases and, and how they flow through the system. So in summary, the benefits of, of one call is we have you know real-time support. There's always somebody who is certified who can respond to your call. Um, the incidents are routed directly to an engineer who has the capability uh, to answer the call and uh, begin to work the case. They're always monitored. Um, we do have a very uh, good process in place with respect to ServiceNow uh, so that we continuously monitor the cases. There's always different ways to escalate cases. We recommend that you, can, you escalate 
through the one call team, but you can always reach out to your account executive or your field team. You should should um, you know feel comfortable knowing that you know you always have somebody who you can reach out to to escalate a case. And again, we have a really strong uh, relationship with our manufacturer partners, and we want to be that that single point of contact for um, um, multiple uh, products. And uh, you have access to our 24 by 7 resolution center and uh, via the 1-800 number, email, or portal. So at this time, I'll take any questions. You can email them in. Uh, Shandani, do you have any questions from the, from the uh, callers? Um, not yet, but go to submit your question, you can go ahead and type those in, and we'll compile them. All right, um, I'm not seeing any. So with that, um, should we give everybody their 30 minutes back, Shane? Okay, thank you very much for your time today. And if you have any questions, you can email me directly, again, at jhowell at datalink.com, and I'll be happy to answer them. All right. Thank you, Jane, for presenting. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's webcast. An on-demand version of this webcast will be available two to three days um, from this webcast. You will also receive an email notification when it's ready to be viewed. Thank you again um, for participating. Have a good day.